five things or five questions God's people often say or ask. Special guest Annie McAllister and I are going to answer four of those all-important questions. So get ready. Hello, everybody. I'm your host, Stevie Garofalo. I'm in studio today with my good friend and, listen, man, good buddy and godly man, Mr. Andy McAllister. We call him Gandorf. Yeah, you can see by the hair, he just looks majestic. Andy, welcome to the program. Hey, Stephen, my brother. How are you today? Good. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. A great honor for me and pleasure. You yeah, listen, at the end of the day, I'm Stephen Gear Follow it here with Andy, and this is Reason for Truth, the channel and the organization that helps you, both Christians and non Christians, cut through the fog of cultures, distorted truth, because in our relative world, well, listen, the truth doesn't change, but the human will to distort it certainly does. We cut through the distortion of all the current events with the truth as an antidote to the false messages which are so pervasive in our world today. And as you know, we say the reason for truth where the truth comes first and the reasons come last, but we're always and constantly learning because when we stop learning, we stop teaching, or at least stop teaching well. A little bit of housekeeping, make sure you do two things, man. Smash that subscribe button. Boom! Just keep it down there and give the Sencio Gonzio Sinistro. That's the, uh, the Italian left hook. I called him a Gondorfo for Gandalf and the Hobbit. Because, uh, listen, let me just put that up on the screen. You tell me. I think Andy's better looking, but uh, anyways, I saw some great similarities there. Anyways, he'll let you be yeah, the judge. <laughs> that's Gandorf the White to you. Th that's right, Gandorf the White. I, I like gave him an Italian name, Gandorfo. I just put the vowel on the end because I want to make him an honorary Italian. We love the guy. You know, what can I say? Just a little bit I'm of history. Honored. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Honor is all mine. Andy and I, we go on, uh, we're part of Trail Life 0413 in Matthews, North Carolina. My son's part of that. And Andy's in leadership. And uh, <clears throat> we sit around the fire. We're usually having some in-depth theological good conversations. And uh, so we decided, hey, you know what? About time Andy comes and joins the show because he always has something good, substantive, always biblical. So it's a real honor to have him here. People often say, by the way, Andy, and this is going to be question one I want to throw at you. Why does God allow suffering in my life? They'll ask that or, or in the life of others. What do you say about that? I think people that um, question why is there evil or suffering in the world, more specifically, people who are angry or blame God for the bad things that happen to them, it indicates to me a, a fundamental lack of understanding of three very critical things that are interconnected that go to the very core of our worldview. Uh, first, it indicates to me a, a lack of understanding of reality, of the universe of creation of the world more specifically the world of men that is culture society government the basic reality that we all live in the bubble of reality that we exist in it also indicates to me a a, a lack of understanding of self uh, of, of who you are of what you are how you got here why you're here and how you fit into this core reality that we're faced with and Finally, it indicates a lack of understanding of God, of, of what God is, of who God is, how God works, what God can do, what God will do or will not do, and most importantly, what God has done. Hmm. That's great. Yeah, I like what you said, because uh, truth is what is. Truth is what corresponds to reality. Exactly what you said. And all worldviews, as you said, lead to God, who is truth and who dictates reality. Great. I, that was very, very helpful, Andy. Thank you. In follow-up, in light of what you just said regarding why God allows suffering, could you expound a little more deeply, uh, start off with really understanding of God and the universe in the light of suffering? And then I want you to, well, go, I have two other areas I want you to cover. One is going to, the second is going to be reality or the nature of fallen man, and then thirdly, the nature of God and, and how kind of how God operates. But would you start off in light of this of suffering, you know, and pain and how we accept it, what would you say in terms of the, the, what the Bible says about understanding of God and the universe in light of suffering? Well, these three core things are interconnected, and, and you cannot separate from the two. But in order to get a grasp of what's going on in the world around you and how it affects you, you have to understand these three things. And the biblical worldview for these three things kind of goes as follows. You have to start from the very beginning. In the beginning, God created. So we know that God created the universe, the natural world, and everything that's in it. 
Uh, God created the universe for the earth, and God created the earth to put man on. God created man to be a companion who would have an intimate, interpersonal relationship with God. Uh, however, man chose to reject that relationship. Man rebelled against God, sinned against God, and fell into a state of sin, which resulted in the entire human race now being in a fallen state of sin. Uh, and because of that, evil entered the world, and that's why bad things happen. You have to understand mm. there are bad things in the world because sin entered the world and opened the door for evil to take over. Secondly, you have to understand yourself and who you are as a human being and how you fit into all of this. As I mentioned, God created humans to be his companion. God created us with something he gave no other creature in his creation, which is free will. What God wants from us is nothing more than love. God wants to be loved. And in order to love, love has to be given freely of your own volition or it is not love. You cannot create love. You cannot force someone to love you. It has to be given. And the only way love can be given is if the creature has a free will. And that's what God gave to us. But because man took the gift of free will and used it to rebel against God, he rejected God. Every man, woman, and child that has ever come after that is now confined to the same condition of sin and fallen state. And that's what you have to come to grips with. You have to come to terms with it. We are sinners, all of us, every last one of us. Yeah. Romans tells us uh, all of sin and fall short of the glory of God, that there are none not right, none righteous, none, not one. So our natural state at this point is a fallen state of sin, and you've got to understand that. And thirdly, you have to understand God. God is pre-existent and he is eternal. He created the entire universe and everything that's in it is his handiwork. He literally spoke the universe into existence. You try to wrap your mind around that mm, one. Mm. But God is sovereign and he is in control of his universe. God is also the creator of truth. He is the author of truth. All truth is God's truth. Out of truth comes the law because the law is based in the truth. And we know from the law that the nature of man is sin. God is just. Because God is just, he cannot allow the sin to exist, and he cannot allow sinful creatures into his presence. Mm. But God is also merciful, and because he is merciful, he has provided us a way out of our sinful state. And that goes to the core of what God has done for us. God has provided us a way out of our sinful state, a way of salvation through the gift of his son, Jesus Christ, who he sent in the form of a man who lived a perfect life, who paid the penalty of sin for us. And these three things are interconnected with each other, but these are the fundamental fundamental realities that you have to come to terms with to begin to understand how and why there is suffering in the world today. I've never heard it answered that way. That was absolutely really good. Um, I appreciate that. You were speaking about understanding of the universe and the reality of nature of fallen man, and then you tied in how God operates all in one. I think that was uh, that's very helpful. I appreciate that. You know, a lot of people are suffering, and, and you know, I think Andy's answer gives us quite a bit of understanding ourselves in light of our suffering or in others. And you listen, many of us are in good times right now. And as I just did another episode, you know, when uh, in God's timing from Ecclesiastes three, you know, it's a matter of time. But you know, you're going to go through trials. But if you're going through trials, it's a matter of time before you come back up. And, you know, what Andy just provided for us in terms of that will be very helpful. We want to make sure when we're, times are up and when we're in a time of blessing that we take, we study what Andy just has been, you know, told us today and shared with us out of in God's word, certainly, above all things, to what Andy is saying and how to put that into practice so that when the time comes, you'll have that in your reservoir already. Andy, uh, James 4, 8 says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. So, you know, why do some people draw near to God and others rebel or they flee from God as a result, a result of their 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 suffering or or they're seeing suffering in other people's lives? I wrote about that in Ted Turner's life, uh, CNN, the founder, you know, he rejected God purposely, you know, saying that he saw his sister uh, suffer you know, and then eventually from a disease and die. And so he just said he rejected God for that reason. If God calls us to draw near to him, even our suffering, how, how does that work out? Well, I think it reveals more the character of the individual than the character of God. I'm very often very fond of saying there are two kinds of people, this one and that one. Well, 
a good example would be if you take two types of materials. If you took a lump of clay and you took a lump of wax and you went side on a hot summer, southern summer day in July and put the lump of clay and that lump of wax in your driveway under the sun and wash and see what would happen, you would see two very different results. Hmm. Same sun, same radiant energy, but the effects that it has on these two different materials will be different. The clay is going to get hard and the mac wax is going to melt. So that kind of goes to what your natural makeup is. People who draw near to God in the in the face of suffering will discover that, and we have biblical promises throughout the Bible that, that tell us that, that if you draw near to God, God will draw near to you. If, if you seek, you will find it. If you knock, the door will be open. If you ask, you will receive. God is ready to provide us all these things if we draw near to him and if we turn him. The other side of that coin is if you reject God, he will be absent from you and you should not be surprised when that happens. Now, those who are rejecting God, who are out of companionship with God, kind of exhibit three characteristics. One, they're in rebellion against God, obviously, which means they're angry at God. They look for faults with God and they blame God for the acts of men. It also means they're deceived. They've been lied to. Uh, they allow themselves to be lied to. They want to be lied to. Paul described having itching ears as symboling teachers that basically provide you with ideologies and false doctrines that we're only too willing mm -hmm. to embrace simply because they make us feel good. Uh, Jeremiah says that the heart above all else is deceitful and desperately wicked. Well, yeah, the heart is deceitful. Well, who do we see? We deceive each other. We certainly do that all the time. But who do we deceive the most? We deceive ourselves. And because we are deceiving ourselves to the blinding ourselves to the truth, it's hard to put these things in a biblical perspective that help uh, bring clarity to it. And finally, you're in denial. Quite frankly, people who are in denial reject the truth in spite of overwhelming facts and evidence to the contrary. They blame others. They blame God for their ills and they take no responsibility for their actions or the role that they play in their condition. You know, that's a great point, and it starts with itching ears. That's where it starts. When you when you want to when you when you listen when you're unteachable and you just want to listen to people who tell you what you want to hear, exactly where they <laughs> just told you, you end up in a bad spot, because it's a matter of time before the blessing of God begins to withdraw from you and His judgment, you know, listen, comes upon you, and then uh, you know you could always repent and make a U-turn, but the consequences are very real. I like Hebrews, heard, yeah. I'm sorry. I've often heard it said that for those who understand, no explanation is necessary. For those who don't understand, no explanation is possible. <laughs> That's a, yeah. In other words, I, I asked a question of my professor at seminary. He said, uh, said, how do you reason with an unreasonable person? He says, you don't. You know, they, they think they're just as right as you are, but the truth doesn't go both ways. And that's a good point. Hebrews 10.22 says, let us draw near to God with a sincere heart and with the full assurance that faith brings our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our bodies washed with pure water. So I think God's waiting in open arms, you know, whether we're backslidden or, you know, we just haven't really embraced God, I think, uh, and, and uh, Son, Jesus Christ. We need to do that today. Andy, you know, listen, what should someone do who's struggling with suffering to overcome their struggle? You know, First Peter 5, 7 says, Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. And that's, I think, the best starting point, which is a mindset, an attitude. It's grounded in the Bible. James 1, uh, verses 2 to 4 says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything, Andy, I think in our current generation, having said all what God's Word just said, I think there's a lot of parents and children alike who have abandoned this wisdom because they don't want the suffering. They don't want to look at suffering as even trying to make them better. And, um, you know, this has been a problem since uh, Adam and Eve in the garden. I remember my, one of my first Bible studies, very, very mature Christians. It was in McLean Presbyterian Church. And um, I remember every once in a while you'd see somebody say, yeah, you know, I was in the hospital for months they got an accident or something. And, uh, you know, it was one of the greatest times. For, and, and I'm like thinking to myself, man, you got to be kidding me. You know, as a new believer, kind of new into studying the, the Bible. And, you know, they're just talking about how they grew close to God through their trials. What, what say you on that? Well, you have to go to the source when you're trying to find truth. Uh, and the source of all truth is God's Word. Hmm. 
God is a creator of truth. He's the author of truth, and he reveals his truth in his written word. The Bible is the lens by which we discern all truth. So by studying the Bible, steeping yourself in the Bible, and this is, is something that you have to take very seriously. You have to do it regularly. You have to be proactive. You just can't keep a Bible on your coffee table and absorb it by osmosis. You have to get into the Word. You have to read the Word. You have to read it like a novel. Study it like a textbook. Meditate on it. Contemplate on it. Think about it. Memorize it. And I think this is a lost art. Memorizing Scripture is so important because whatever trial or tribulation you're facing in life, there are plenty of Scriptures available that will help you through those times. By memorizing Scripture and having it on the tip of your tongue, you will be prepared to deal with whatever hardships that life might come your way. Hear the Word. Read it out loud. Have other people read it out loud. I think there's a real power and blessing to listen to the Word being read out loud. And also you have to apply it. You have to apply it to your life. You have to take the principles that God reveals to you in his holy written word and apply it to your life. Uh, there, there's an interesting story that comes to mind when you start talking about facing adversity, pain, suffering, even death in life. God uses tragedy. You know, the wonderful uh, scripture, Romans 8, 28. We all know that when God works all things to the good for lo those who love him and are called according to his purpose. But God uses tragedy and suffering and pain to work wonderful works in the lives of others. He may take a tragedy to work a good in your life. He may take a tragedy in your life and work good in someone else. I have a friend years ago was a engraver and a jeweler, and he was really good. I mean, the guy was an artist. He produced just some magnificent work. Well, I went to visit him one day in his shop, and as I sat there by his work table while he was working, he had a lady's wedding ring, an engagement ring, a diamond ring that he was working on. And as we chatted, he took that ring, and he slapped it in a vice, and he cranked down on that vice, and he went to work. And I mean, he took a hacksaw, and he hacked on that ring, and he beat it with a hammer, and he blew it with a blowtorch, and he ground on it with a file. I mean, he hacked and grind and torched and blew and hacked and torched. And I said to him, if that lady saw what you were doing to her ring, she would die. <laughs> but when he was done, he held up this ring and it was pristine, a gleaming, sparkling work of art. It was flawless. You would have never imagined in your wildest dreams the process that that ring went through to achieve this perfected state. And that's what God does through us. It is this pain and suffering and the, the blowtorch and the hacksaw and the file and the hammer that God refines us, develops us, grows us, teaches us maturity. And through his word, he will give us the tools and the power that we need to face whatever adversity mm. you know, might come our way in life. Amen. Yeah, I guess the pruning, we, you know, God used the word pruning a lot in the Bible. So when we think about pruning, you know, we, we, you know, pruning is, is a very tough thing. I mean, we give chastisement, correction. None of us like that. We, in our world today, especially, boy, we're all, it's a very independent world. It's no longer more of a community-based world. People don't want to be told. I went to my neighbor years and years ago. I said, you know, you, he's watering his his lawn in the middle of the summer in the dead of, you know, the, I said, you got to burn your grass up. That what? And he just got angry with me. Didn't want to hear it. I said, well, let him burn his grass up. But he did. But mm -hmm. uh, anyways, good point. Any last thoughts? I want to wrap up here. Any last thoughts uh, you have on that? Sure. I would just say to anyone who is struggling with pain and suffering in life, or if you feel like you're angry at God or that God has somehow slighted you or dealt you a raw deal, um, and if you have not committed your life to Jesus Christ, I want to urge you in the strongest terms to do that because only in so doing will you get the answers that you seek. You'll find those answers in his word, but you have to do it through his Holy Spirit. How, how do you do that? It's really quite simple. First thing you have to do is confess. You have to admit that you're a sinner and you have to confess this to God. Come to terms with your sinful state. You have to do that. And secondly, you have to repent. And that doesn't mean just be sorry you got caught. That means you have to be genuinely sorry that you've done what you've done. And repent means to turn away from what you've done, to mm. turn away from your ways, your sin, and seek a new direction. You have to ask forgiveness. This means you have to humble yourself. You have to swallow your pride, which is the hardest thing to do, but you have to humble yourself before God and sincerely ask his forgiveness. And finally, just ask Jesus Christ to come into your life and to become Lord of your life. He will send his Holy Spirit into your heart and he will provide you with guidance and wisdom and comfort and strength to endure the hardships that come our way. All these problems are still going to exist, but God will equip you 
shout out to Steve Garfalo, uh, to deal with and to even thrive in the face of pain and suffering and evil that we face in our world today. Amen. Well, Andy, you're a quipper. You see, Andy's a, told me some stories. We'll do that. We'll get. I want to. You know, what we need to do is have you back talk about you being a quipper in your Sunday school class with the past church with that pastor. I want to want to hear that story again. Well, Andy I got a few stories about that too. He does. He doesn't play around. I tell you. By the way, mm-hmm. Andy, you're a product of how many years of uh, legacy of pastor? My father was a Presbyterian minister, and my grandfather was a Presbyterian minister. He had no choice. He was just, boy, I tell you one thing, the Lord Lord had his hand on him for uh, over 100 years ago. Amen. Well, I appreciate Andy being on air with us today. We definitely want you back. Perhaps we could talk about that as the next subject. I want to talk about that, uh, you know, how you stood up and stand strong because anybody could do it. You know, we could all. Our job here at Reason for Truth is to equip you, and you want to do great resources. Uh, You can go out to Amazon or you can go to Tried Stone Publishing, or just go to Equipped Academy and get it there, unless you want to go to Amazon and get Equipped Basic Training and Apologetics for Evangelism. That's actually a new um, training course online with quizzes and a certificate. You can get you can only get that at EquippedAcademy.com. But we appreciate you tuning in with us today and Andy being with us today. If you want some more resources besides EquippedAcademy.com, you definitely want to go to ReasonForTruth.org, ReasonForTruth.Bible. And again, lastly, you know, two most important things, boom, smash that subscribe button. You're not going to regret it. And then tickle that little clock down there, as my German friend says. That's just the alert bell. The alert bell is like an alarm clock. You could have it on your schedule. It could be there electronically, but if there's no ring on your bell, then you're not going to hear it. So do that. God's blessings to you. I'm your host, Stephen Garofalo, with special guest Andy McAllister, or as I formally call him, or lovingly call him, called Dorfo. And uh, this is your reason for truth for today.